things this weekend. We have UFC Fight Night Rosenstrike versus Gaziev. So, uh, real quick to note, uh, this event would have marked the promotion's debut in Saudi Arabia. However, uh, January 15th, it was reported by Area Hawani that basically Saudi Arabia was seeking a better, more high quality card from the UFC and not a fight night card, basically. And that the event would be postponed uh, until June. The UFC and Dana White came out and kind of dismissed this and, and defended it and said uh, the Saudi government didn't even know who was on the card at all. Uh, and then the on January 24th, so a little more than a week later, the Saudi Arabian Chairman of General Entertainment Authority, uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce his name, announced that the event would be postponed until June 22nd. Uh, that the decision was rescheduled, taken to ensure the best caliber of talent will be available to participate. So here we go. So this Saturday, March 2nd, the event is moved to the UFC Apex in Las Vegas with all the same fights originally booked for this event. So here we go. Uh, before we talk about, I think we're going to start with uh, not Rosas uh, Tercios anymore. But yeah, with, it's just uh, going to be five fights now. Yes, so we're replacing that one with which one? There's no replacing. It's just five fights now on the main card instead of six. One, two, three. I only see four. Umar Namagamedov's fight. Schnell's fight. Makayev's fight. Yeah. Petrino's fight. Looks like fight. Schnell and Ursa oh, are the first one, yeah. or at least the first ones on that list. So we, before we get into the main card, any fights or fighters that you guys want to quickly spotlight on the undercard for our listeners? There's a couple of good fights actually on this card. A couple of, uh, I guess, sleepers to a certain extent. But, uh, Mark, you want to go with a couple first? I was just going to throw one out there, which is Javid Basharat, who you guys know I think is very good. I'm pulling up my rankings just for reference for people. Uh, he's my number 25 ranked bantamweight already. Uh, I don't really understand why he's fighting Eamon Zahabi, of all people, who's like, probably like 50th in, in my rankings. No hate on Eamon, but it just feels like Javid had moved past this point. His last fight was against Victor Henry, which was a you know big deal fight. Both of them kind of trying to get up to the edge of the rankings here, and obviously it ended in no contest. So he's he's down fighting Eamon's hobby. I'm not sure why, but I'm I'm hoping to see him shine again and kind of keep reminding people how, how nasty he is, and he's still undefeated at this point. Yeah, man. Uh, Christian Leroy Duncan is going to be fighting Claudio Ribeiro, which is actually a pretty good banger of a fight, just quality wise. Eric Anders on this card against Jamie Pickett. That could actually be a really good fight. It could also be a really boring fight, but, you know, we'll see. Um, those are the two kind of big ones that I'm looking forward to, other than the, uh, the ones we're going to talk about. Okay, as we touched upon, the fight between Raul Rosas Jr. and Ricky Tercios uh, was supposed to go down last week at UC Mexico, Moreno versus Roy Val 2. Uh, but, I mean, the two of them, they both weighed in. They, they stared down. And then I believe the day of the fight, right, is when Rosas Jr. had to pull out with, I believe, an unnamed illness of some kind, right? Dude, according to Tercios, he made the call five minutes before the walk. Oh, Jesus. Like, it was... Yeah, which makes me want because like so the story was, oh, he was sick all day and he was trying to push through and see if he could fight. Sure, sure. But the fact that they apparently let him go to five minutes before the walk makes me wonder if there's more to that story because it just seems like an odd situation. Yeah. And Tercios seemed to imply that he didn't love how something went down. So I don't know. I'm curious what if if we knew every single detail, what the whole story would look like. But who knows? Yeah. Yeah. So their fight was pushed back. One week because, you know, we're in this midst of this long, uh, long chain of UFC events every weekend. So like, OK, next week at the Apex. And that was booked. And now it is not happening again. Uh, it was ultimate. Uh, it has been scrapped for unknown reasons. Unless you guys have heard other things since. I know Tercios was saying there was never any contract signed and, and, and okay. that they kind of just threw it out there like, oh, yeah, they're fighting at the Apex. So maybe it was something about that. But I, I don't actually know. I know it was oh, supposed to be okay. a catchweight too because they don't, didn't want to make them have to cut weight again. Yeah. 
Okay, well, let's begin in the bantamweight division. A fight going down between Umar Nurmagomedov and Beksat Almahan. I hope I'm not butchering that too bad. Uh, Nurmagomedov, 28 years old, out of, you guessed it, Dagestan, Russia. Surprise, surprise. Uh, undefeated, 16 and 0, with 10 finishes, excuse me, 9 finishes. Seven of those are submissions. Most recently, knocking out Howdy Barcelos, who fought this past weekend. Uh, that was back in January of 2023. So Nurmagomedov uh, hasn't stepped into the octagon in quite some time. And he'll be facing off against the fighter out of Kazakhstan, Al Makan. 14 and 1 as a professional. Only one of those 14 wins going the distance, 13 finishes, 12 of those being knockouts. Most recently, uh, defeating Jan Ferez at Octagon Promotion uh, based in, where was that based in? It must have been in Europe or, or uh, in Kazakhstan. He has fought for uh, UAE Warriors briefly. Uh, yeah, in Kazakhstan that was. And he is steps in to make his UFC debut against the uh, very tough competitor in Nurmagomedov. Omar, start us off. Give us your take and your pick of Nurmagomedov and the newcomer, Al Makan. Yeah, uh, you know, a choice by the UFC. <laughs> um, it is a possibility. I mean, we've seen we've seen things like this before where they'll throw some random person into the mix like this. Um, and a lot, you know, there have been times where the person absolutely exceeds any expectation that we had for them. Um, and other times, you know, they're just fodder uh, for for the person like Umar Nurmagomedov. I don't really know anything about uh, Bezcat. I don't know anything about any of these promotions other than uh, UAE Warriors that he's been in. Um, so it's really hard for me to gauge exactly what we're looking at here. What I can tell you is Umar, Umar Nurmagomedov is a motherfucker. I know that for sure. Um, and I know that he is, uh, very good all over, both in striking, both in standing or both in, um, striking and ground game. Also his takedowns are obviously disgusting and very effective. His clinch game is very, very tight, really difficult for me to pick against Umar Magomedov against somebody, especially against somebody who, you know, I don't really know. So I'm going to go with Umar here, man. I, I, you know. Short of a miracle here, something crazy that we're going to see, I just think Umar is going to take him down and submit him. And I don't think it'll take him all that long. So I will go with Umar Namagomedov first round submission. Mark? So Umar is a casual minus 1,200. Uh, Bexat is plus 750 on the other side. One inch of height for Umar. Another guy I can't find to reach for, for Almakan, uh, unfortunately. And yeah, I mean, I'm with Omar. I don't understand what's happening here. Umar is ranked number 13 at Bantamweight. Before getting hurt, he was booked against Corey friggin' Sandhagen. I, I get it that Bexad is a is a solid prospect, but like, how is this the booking choice? I just don't, I don't get what the thought process is behind this. You know, the guy's a minus 1,200 favorite, so why are we doing this? You know, that right there tells you there's an issue. Um but you know, I think more than likely we end up getting some grappling out of these two. I mean, obviously Bexad is, is seventeen and one. He's he's the real deal to this point. But it's just he, he's fighting Umar Nurmagomedov. Um, so yeah, I think we get some grappling out of these two. I, I'll say that Umar is able to find a, a sub at some point in, in a transition spot here and, and end this thing. Uh, but he likely has the edge everywhere, striking as well. Um, so I'll go Umar by sub in round two. Like it. Yeah, not much to say. Don't know much about Al Makana, obviously. We do know quite a bit about Nurmagomedov. I feel like this is a kind of an automatic pick. You know, in spite of Al Makan's nice and impressive professional record, he obviously has been overseas in smaller promotions, and now he's stepping up. And this is qu quite the litmus test. For Sorry, 14 and 1. I said 17, my bad. That's okay. Quite the litmus test for this debutante. <clears throat> Got to go with Nurmagomedov here. I'll say he finishes him in the third round. I'm with you. Okay, let's go down to the flyweight division. 
Matt Schnell taking on Steve Erseg. So we have Matt Danger Schnell, the 34-year-old, fighting out of uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. 16 and 7 with one no contest with nine submission victories. He's looking to get back in the win column after losing to Mateos Nicolau by knockout back in December of 2022. So we haven't seen him in a minute. And he's stepping in to face Steve Ursek, Astro Boy, the 28 year old out of Western Australia, Australia, 11 and 1 with seven finishes and and six of those being submissions. Hasn't lost since his first and only loss back in 2017. He is on quite the win streak, and he beat uh, Alessandro Costa in his UFC debut back in this past November. Oh, that, that, I'm sorry, that was uh, his second yeah. fight in the UFC. He's 2-0 in the UFC, uh, defeating David Dvorak and Alessandro Costa. And here we go. Mark, start us off this time with the odds and your pick. Okay, Steve Ersig, pretty big favorite. He's minus 335, and Matt Schnell is plus 255. Uh, the height is the same. Schnell has a one-and-a-half-inch reach advantage. I'm going to pick Steve Ersig, but I think Matt Schnell is really live here. You know, as good as Steve Ersig has looked, we did see him get tested by Al- Alessandro Costa in his last fight. And honestly, if Costa had a bigger gas tank and he was on short notice to, to his credit, that fight might have gone a different way because end of round two, that was anybody's fight. And um, Matt Schnell has that gas tank and he will also eat damage and keep coming. He's more than willing to scrap. He is no joke on the mat. He can find a sub from anywhere. Just ask Sumaderji. So I think there's a lot of reasons why Matt Schnell is live in this fight and uh, for that reason, I think I'm definitely going to touch his betting line in some fashion, seeing him as this big of an underdog. Maybe I'll look for a prop on a finish or something. I'm not quite sure yet, but I think it's probably wider than it should be. But in terms of a straight pick, I will go Erseg. I think he's more poised. His striking is maybe just a bit more buttoned up and behind a game plan. Um, and I think he does have a bit of a grappling edge overall. He is nasty grappling. So for the straight pick, I I will go Steve Ersegg UD, but uh, yes, Schnell's interesting odds-wise. I'm going to follow you there. I totally agree. Steve Ersegg has looked nasty since he's coming to the UFC. And dude, Matt Schnell is my guy. I love Matt Schnell, but he's got a lot going against him in this fight. And I do agree. I think that he... um, I think he gets finished as well. I think it's going to be a club and sub for Steve oh, Ursaig. And I'll say uh, it's going to happen round two. Omar. I think I'm going to go Matt Schnell here, man. Oh, baby. I like Matt Schnell. Um, I don't really disagree with any of the things you guys are saying. I think Ursig is, is, is a really good fighter, a solid winner. Um, I just don't. I don't see him as unbeatable. And I think Matt Snell presents a level of chaos that I think could be interesting to see get Ursig off of his game. Because I think you're right, Margaret. I think Ursig has a very uh, measured approach. He's he's very much about having his own flow and kind of um, setting his own pace at his own timing. And, 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 and it seems like in his fights, people follow that pace and that timing. And I don't think Schnell will do that. Um, and I think <clears> the <throat> chaos that Schnell brings is, is going to make it a very interesting fight to see if it messes with Ursig a little bit. So I'm going to go with Schnell here. <clears throat> I think he catches him, man. I'm going to go second round KO. Like it. Okay. Okay. I like it. I like it. Okay. Let's move on to the, uh, flyweight bout between Alex Perez and Mohamed Mokhaev. So here we go. Alex Perez, 31 years old, fighting out of Lemoore, California, USA. His pro record stands at 24 and 7 coming into this Saturday night with five knockout wins and seven submission wins. And he's very much looking to get back in the win column and snap this two fight losing streak, most recently getting uh, neck cranked into submission by. None other than Alexandre Pantoja. 
and before that getting choked out by Davis and Figueredo. So nothing to hang his head about there. And he's looking to turn back the very young uh, up-and-comer rising prospect in Muhammad Makayev. Muhammad the Punisher Makayev, 23 years old, out of Manchester, England. Undefeated, 11-0, and with one no contest. Eight finishes, six of those being submissions. His last fight, he choked out Tim Elliott in the third round. Uh, I'll go first, just to get this out of the way. I think it may be no surprise that I'm taking Makayev here. I think I have to because I was so high on him in our 2024 predictions. Um, so yeah, I will be taking Makayev here. I think Alex Perez, it's a great flyweight. He's solid, he's well-rounded, but I think that uh, Makayev, his athleticism uh, is going to shine through here. I'm going to take him by a UD. Mark, give us the odds, your pick, and justify it. <laughs> Uh, minus 375 are the odds for Makayev as the favorite. Alex Perez is plus 285. Again, pretty wide. Um, one inch of height and four and a half inches of reach for Makayev. And yeah, I mean, I, I kind of hate this one because how am I supposed to evaluate Alex Perez, man? The, the guy has one fight in the last three and a half years, and it lasted about a minute. So he has a minute in three and a half years that I'm supposed to go off of. Uh, he's pulled out of a ton of fights, whether it's with injuries or sickness or weight issues or what have you. He just doesn't seem to ever get in the cage. Hopefully he is going to get in the cage on Saturday. Um, when he did fight, he was pretty damn solid, but I just, I can't ignore all that inactivity and, and pick him against a guy who, who looks as fantastic as Muhammad Makayev has looked. So on paper, yes, Perez is Makayev's biggest test thus far, but I, I think it's one Makayev can pass, especially as the fight moves into the second and third rounds where I, I feel like Makayev's wrestling can really start to take over. Uh, and Makayev, we know, will go to the death if that's what it takes, man. We, we've seen that from him. And I think that mentality separates him from Perez as this gets into deeper waters. So uh, I'll say Makayev gets a late second round submission. Omar. I uh, I would imagine Alex Perez is looking to get back on the winning track here. I just think this is literally the worst fight he could have gotten. Uh, Muhammad Mikhaev is an absolute beast. Uh, he's well-rounded everywhere, and his aggression and his cardio and the intensity are not what you want if you're on a two-fight losing streak, especially a two-fight submission losing streak. Because if we're being wholly honest, Alex Perez is probably going to lose his neck again in this fight. So I'm going to go with Mikhaev here. First round submission. Probably rear naked choke. Let's go. Okay. Moving on to the light heavyweight division between Vitor Petrino and Tyson <coughs> Pedro. Here we go. Petrino, who sure dog lists three different nicknames. <laughs> Ikao, Merciless, and Gabulus, Cab Cabuloso. Okay, he's 26 years old. He's fighting out of Brazil. He's undefeated 10 and 0 with seven knockouts and one submission victory. He won on contender series and is now 3 and 0 in the UFC. Here we go. Tyson Pedro, 32 years old, fighting out of Sydney, New uh, New South Wales, Australia. His record stands at 10 victories and four defeats. All 10 of his victories have been finishes with an even split, five knockouts, five submissions. Most recently, knocking out Anton Turkali back in September. Omar, start us off this time. Give us your take and your pick. I think both of these guys are very interesting. You guys already know I love me some Tyson Pedro. Um, you know, he had a rough go against Modesto Spikowskis uh, last year. It was a very odd fight that was. It, it, I, mean, I don't remember exactly why that fight went the way that it went. I don't remember. He was, he was sick. He had a head stomach oh, issue. That's what it was. Yeah, very weird. Um, and a little bit of a speed bump, but 
still very much on the Tyson Pedro train. I think Vitor uh, Petrino is a great test for Tyson Pedro just because of how dominant Petrino has seemingly been, uh, both in the knockout game as well as in the, the even even decision wise, just going all three rounds. Uh, I think it's a great test. I think it's a good name. And there's not a lot of fame star power behind the name itself, but I think it's a good test for, for Tyson Pedro. And I think it'll allow him to perform and put on some good work there as well, because Petrino will fight. Um, so I'm going to go with Tyson Pedro here. I, I can't imagine these guys end up surviving. One of these guys is definitely going to have to go down, uh, but I'm going to go with Tyson Pedro here. I think he can get it done. He's been on, he's, he's been looking solid with the exception of that sick fight. Um, but I'm going to go with a round one here, KO. Well, uh, I'm going to go with the opposite kind of a pick. <clears throat> I'm going to go with a knockout victory for Petrino here. I think he's a very exciting and very dangerous prospect coming out of Brazil. Uh, I'm going to say he knocks him out in the third round. Mark, your take? Okay, so again, wider than I expected. Vitor Petrino is minus 310. Tyson Pedro is plus 250 as the underdog. Uh, Pedro is taller by an inch. He also has a one and a half inch reach advantage. Uh, Petrino, as you said, he's 10 and 0, undefeated. He has looked like an animal. So I understand, I guess, why he's favored the way that he is, but man, this is another one to me where I feel like the dog is worth a look because I, I feel like this fight is, is fairly coin flippy. Like it, it wasn't that long ago that people had pretty high hopes for Tyson Pedro. And then he lost that Bukowski's fight when we have later found out he was badly sick. And I feel like everyone has kind of just dismissed him. And it seems like that he's almost being used as a stepping stone for Petrino here now. But this man, Tyson Pedro, is just as dangerous as Petrino is. He's a huge knockout threat. He'll take you down and wrestle you. He'll submit you. And I know Petrino is all those same exact things, but that, that's kind of my point. Like, they're, they're very similar fighters, and I'm not sure what the big differentiator is that makes this 3-1 to one for Petrino. And, you know, maybe we're going to see, and I'm going to realize what it is. But for right now, you know, I didn't go with Schnell when I – highlighted the underdog value so I, I i'll pull the trigger on this one i will go tyson pedro and i will say it is a round two tko damn okay we're gonna go main event now with jarzino rosenstrike taking on shamil gaziev in the heavy weight division once again ufc fight night rosenstrike gaziev going down at the ufc apex this saturday march 2nd here we go Jarzinho, Biggie Boy Rosenstrike, the 35-year-old out of Suriname, 13-5 and five as a pro, with only one of those wins going the distance, the other 12 being knockout wins for Biggie Boy. His career as of late in the past few years has been a little up and down, pretty much ping-ponging between wins and losses, most recently getting choked out by Jalton Almeida in May of last year. And he's looking to turn back the relative newcomer in Shamil Ghazi of the 34 year old fighting out of Bahrain, undefeated 34 year old prospect, 12 and 0, and only one of those 12 wins going the distance. Uh, the other 11 being finishes, eight of those being knockouts. He won his fight on Contender Series and then won his UFC debut, defeating Martin Boudet by knockout, of course. In round two, that was back most recently in December. So here we go. Shamil Gaziev taking on Jarzinho Rosenstrike. I'll go first to get my pick out of the way. Uh, I have always liked Rosenstrike and his kickboxing skills. I think he might have a hand speed edge over Gaziev. Gaziev definitely seems to be a precise striker, but I, this is going to be a bit more of a field pick for me. I'm going to go with Rosenstrike. I think he's going to hand Gaziev his first loss, and it's going to be a knockout loss. And I'm going to say that it's going to happen in the first round. Mark, why don't you give us those odds now and your pick? 
All right, this one's fairly close. Gaziev, despite obviously having the much less proven resume, is the favorite. He is minus 165, and Rosenstrike is plus 135. Uh, two inches of height for Gaziev. The reach is identical. And yeah, as I just alluded to, we are taking a big step forward with Shamil Gaziev here. You know, from Martin Budai to a man in Rosenstrike who has knocked out Alistair Overeem and Junior Dos Santos and plenty of others. Um, so it's a lot. Now, granted, Gaziev did look pretty dominant against Budai, and, and he has some other decent wins pre-UFC in terms of names. But still, Rosenstrike will pretty easily be the most dangerous man he's fought. And Gaziev is not a guy who is afraid to throw down in there or who is really that, you know, safe. So he, he's going to need to be really conscious of what's coming back. But at the same time, going off the pressure that we saw from him against Budai, I think that helps him a lot because Rosenstrike historically does not love dealing with heavy pressure. And, on top of that, he doesn't have a great track record against guys who are looking to wrestle him, and you got to assume Gaziev is going to do that. So can Gaziev get slept here? One million percent. Um, but I am going to roll with him. I'll say he can wear Rosenstrike down with pressure, stay safe enough, mix in the wrestling, maybe even heavily, and just kind of wear Rosenstrike down and eventually get him out of there. So I will go round three TKO via Granite Pound. Okay, Omar, Gaziev. take it home. I have never really been super sold on Jorginho Rosenstrike, if we're being wholly honest, at least not from a technique standpoint. The dude has got power, no doubt about it. Um, but I think, I think there's a lot of relying on that power that the technique gets lost for Rosenstrike. And so if he can't touch somebody's chin to knock them out, he's generally not winning a fight. Um, and I just think Gaziev is just seemingly from the little bit that I've seen of him at this point, I just think he looks like a better fighter, somebody who has more to offer than just winging bombs. Um, and so I just, I trust Gaziev a little bit more in this situation here. Like I said, I've never really been truly sold on, on Rosenstrike. You guys know I have kind of a, a bias towards heavyweight fighters and the, sloppiness that tends to be the striking of that weight division. Um, and I see less of that with Gaziev than I do with Rosenstrike. So I'm going to go with Gaziev here. I think he can cleanly get Rosenstrike out of there. I think it will happen in the first round, but I do think he slumps him. Round one KO, Gaziev. Wow. Well, there you have it, folks. Those are our picks for these bouts in this upcoming weekend of UFC Fight Night, Rosenstrike versus Gaziev. And that's that's an episode. We did it. 